afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General, 2nd Marine Division, Major General Calvert L. Worth, Jr., welcome to the 6th Marine Change of Command Ceremony, in which Colonel Gregory P. Gordon will relinquish command to Colonel Neil R. Berry. Today's parade is being performed by the Marines and Sailors of the Fighting Six. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by Command Chaplain, Lieutenant Commander William Butts, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come before you today asking for your blessing upon this time-honored tradition of the change of command. As General John Lejeune said, leadership is the sum of those qualities of intellect, human understanding, and moral character that enables a person to inspire and control a group of people successfully. We're thankful that today, God, you have provided us just these types of leaders, men with intellect, understanding, character, and the ability to lead. We give you thanks for the leadership of Colonel Gordon. We've been blessed to serve under a Colonel who exemplifies for us what it means to be a true leader of Marines, who cared about his people and inspired within each of us the desire to do the best work. We ask for your continued watchful care over him and his family, Tara, Lauren, Jackson, and Ian. May you bless them as they head off to the beautiful state of Tennessee in any future endeavors, be it college or new careers. May they redeem the dime together as a family in this new season of life. For our incoming commander, Colonel Barry, his spouse, Charlotte, and his children, Isabella and Joshua, we ask that you be with them in the days ahead. Give them the grace and strength they will need to navigate the highs, the lows, and challenges of command. Give Colonel Barry wisdom in the decisions he will need to make, the courage to stay true to his values, and success in leading us to fulfill our mission in whatever we may be asked of us. May your be hand be on this regiment and over all those serving throughout the world in harm's way. For to you we give glory and praise now and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Present day parades in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The mass formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle-loaded muskets of the past. The adjutant forms the line of battle, and in those early days, that line consisted of two or three ranks, much like in the parade you will see today. The adjutant today is Captain Indeja Mitchell. Sound attention! <laughs> and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem.
and gentlemen, please be seated. Gentlemen, please rise for honors to the Commanding General of the 2nd Marine Division, Major General Calvert L. Worth, Jr. Present arms!
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is Colonel Gregory P. Gordon. Neil R. Berry will now accompany Colonel Gordon in the reviewing area. Sergeant Major, deliver the codes to the commanding officer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of command. The battle colors of a Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Colonel Gordon, and by accepting the colors, Colonel Barry accepts command and confirms his total commitment to the Marines and sailors that he will command. Sergeant Major Dwayne Reese is delivering the colors to the commanding officer. Present arms! Headquarters, United States Marine Corps, to Colonel Gregory P. Gordon. Subject, relinquish of command. Effective, 1700, 13 June, 2024. You will relinquish command of 6th Marine Regiment and proceed and report to Commanding General, 2nd Marine Division. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Headquarters, United States Marine Corps, to Colonel Neil R. Berry. Subject, assumption of command. Effective 1701, 13 June 2024. You will assume command of 6th Marine Regiment. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, Commandant of the Marine Corps. General of 2nd Marine Division, Major General Calvert L. Worth, Jr. Lieutenant General Adignan, General Simcock, great to see you, sir. General Odom, Colonel Lively, Assistant Division Commander for the Division. Command Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major fellow commanders who have joined us here for this occasion. I would tell you that as I thought about what I might say for this particular event, I first realized that I must always point our attention to the upper left here, where we have the 2nd Marine Division Follow Me Band, and you look out at the field and you see the members of the regiment who are actually here and available, others being globally deployed at this point in time, please give them all a round of applause. Today, today is a great day. First of all, the venue is beautiful. We have a breeze at 1700. 
in June in North Carolina. But that being said, I'm going to be conscious of the Marines that are standing on the field at ease because it makes sense. A ceremony like this, a transition of command, is extremely important. It is an event that occurs frequently, but every one of these events is important. The events are important because the transition of command really signifies that the 6th Marine Regiment that was, we're going to work with the microphone here for as long as we can, and then I'll use my Marine voice um, if necessary. But it signifies that the regiment that has been historically renowned and known for all of its uh, history and legacy. All right, I'm going to bail. Dap on the fly. Hey, uh, again, the words, so that they come out seamlessly here, this is a storied regiment. The regiment has a history that dates back to the most storied moments of the Marine Corps. There in Bella Wood. The history, the legacy, is really why we have this particular event. The transfer of command. Two commanders that are assuming the responsibility of that history and legacy. And they swear on their souls that they will do everything that they can to make sure that the history that is and the regiment that has been so storied will remain so, not only in the eyes of the Corps, but in every individual who has worn a forge and taken on the responsibility of carrying that legacy. It's a wonderful occasion, and this is a prideful moment. I'm gonna take some time to talk about Greg Gordon because he won't brag about himself. He will not. You heard the chaplain's comments that as an individual who represents what we intend every leader to be, Greg epitomizes humility. He epitomizes selflessness. And he is absolutely dedicated to his Marines and sailors. He has maintained an unwavering focus on war fighting and preparing every Marine and sailor in this regiment for the inevitable commitment to combat and being introduced into harm's way. And because of that, this regiment has been able to globally deploy forces and carry out its mission, which is again to be prepared for offensive operations, defensive operations, expeditionary operations. He has generated formations that have gone out on two separate battalion landing team excursions with both the 26 Mu 18 has recently departed as BLT 18 with the 24th Mu, and 36 is in the final months of its preparation to be composited as the 22nd, the BLT for the 22nd Mu. Victor 26 that stands on the field before you is prepared to go all the way to Indo PACOM and serve on the unit deployment program. These formations that under Greg's tutelage have gone through very rigorous training continuum. They've all been trained, evaluated, and certified through a very comprehensive and well-planned and well-organized Marine Corps combat readiness evaluation, 10 to 12 days, doing the things that Marines and sailors are purpose-built to do under the hardest environments. They conduct themselves in force on force evolutions where they are tested against opposing wills and we'll truly find out how good you are, how well you've been trained, and whether or not you're capable of executing your missions. He has used the McCree through force on force evolutions, fire support exercises, and hugely complex night, non-illuminated, combined arms integrated, small arms and indirect fire supported, 100% on MBGs, with two separate objectives, that's just one of the things the companies are prepared to do. It sounds easy and it's easy to say, hugely complex. He has taken this regiment at the center of a regimental combat team out to 29 Palms, our premier training venue, and taken the regiment along with several thousand additional Marines and enablers and pitted that RCT against the 7th Marine Regiment in an integrated training exercise. 
and a MAGTAP warfighting exercise. And he has demonstrated that his regimental headquarters and the battalions that he leads are ready for any circumstance anywhere on the globe at the low end of the range of military operations or at the high end of the range of military operations. It does not matter. Greg has invested everything in understanding how to command and control, how to command and control joint forces, combined forces to include Norwegian mechanized forces, Norwegian snipers, Norwegian small UAS, plus elements of the light or the low altitude artillery defense, air defense artillery. He has taken them all, integrated them with Marine Corps forces and formations, and he took his regiment to Norway and again proved that under any circumstances, whether it be in the desert or the high north, a formation led by Greg Gordon is going to be ready for its mission. And I would tell you that the most important thing Greg has done is take care of the members of this team. Greg, I would tell you that we can go out, myself, the Sergeant Major, the Command Master Chief, we can go out and pulse any formation inside a 6th Marine Regiment and the feedback that we receive is always positive. It's flat, it's level, it's professional, and simply focused on the mission. You and Sergeant Major Reese, you and Sergeant Major Lobo have done the types of things that you need to do in order to take care of not only the Marines, the sailors, but their families. The families that are sitting here want nothing more from us than to know that when we take charge of your loved ones, they're gonna be as well prepared as they can be for the inevitability of going to war. That's all we can promise. And the Marines and the sailors of the regiment resoundingly approve of how they've been led and how they've been prepared. Greg, I would tell you that it's been an absolute pleasure to watch you work for several years. And I've been honored to serve as the commanding general of the division while you've been in charge of 6th Marine Regiment. For you, Tara, Lauren, Jackson, Ian, I would tell you, Tara, thank you for loaning him to us for this moment in time. It's been important, it's been impactful, and the sacrifice, the time away, isn't always pleasant. But if these Marines and sailors would have gone to war under his charge, they would have been as well led as we can possibly offer from a commander. So thank you for your sacrifice and thank you for allowing us to borrow your father and your husband for this moment in time and for all these years. And for Neil Barry, no stranger again to the Follow Me Division, no stranger to these formations out here. Again, one of the most daunting things you'll do is walk into the 6th Marine CP and look behind the glass and see all of those who have come before, going all the way back to Clifton B. Cates. And then recognizing with a gulp that it's time for you to step in and step up and carry this legacy forward. But you've been purpose built for the moment, Neil. You've been prepared, you've been anxious, and that little bit of butterflies, that trepidation is healthy. It means it's important. It means that what you owe is the time and the attention for these Marines and sailors. That has been reflected and been conducted by those who have come before and that you know that you must carry forward. That's good pressure. Pressure makes diamonds. It keeps you focused on the main thing, which is creating war fighting capability. And for Charlotte, Isabella, Josh, again, thank you for loaning Neil to us for this moment in time. It's a big mission for a storied regiment. But like I said, he's been purpose built. He'll be just fine. Continue to support him as you have in the past. He'll have the full support of the division and the MEF. We're proud of you. And again, this is what it's all about, command. So I know that you have our full trust and confidence and that you'll do great things. Greg, thank you for your time, your attention, your investment. Your word cloud is very, very simple, professional, committed and an absolute true Marine, Marine officer. It's been an honor to watch you. It's your time. Okay, thank you so much.
thank you, sir, for the for the kind words. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Uh, Major General Wirth, sir, uh, I would just say thank you for the opportunity to command in this division. From the time of being my IOC instructor as a second lieutenant till now, um, you have been a beacon of professionalism uh, that I have routinely tried to emulate and have consistently failed to emulate. Uh, I did follow you to 1-6 and follow you to here, but uh, just thank you, sir. Thank you for everything, the opportunity to serve in the division. Major General Odom, Brigadier General Select Lively, I'm so excited to see you both back in the Follow Me Division, uh, and I just know there are great things in the future of the Follow Me Division, so thank you. Lieutenant General Odignan, sir, four straight years, sir. Four straight years. Much gray, much more gray hair now, sir. So, But I appreciate your leadership, sir. I appreciate your example, and I appreciate you, sir. And thank you for all that you've done for me personally and professionally over the last four years, sir. We have a number of former Six Marine COs here. I know we've got Dan Canfield here. We've got Major General Simcock retired here as well. So thank you as former COs of the regiment to include Major General Worth. Thank you former COs of the regiment to come out and recognize the regiment here today. So thank you again for being here. Um, we do have to thank the band and I think, you know, as a recovering RSCO, I know exactly how difficult they are to find and how difficult they are to get here today. So they make any event classy and I appreciate them being here uh, and we should too. So, but I think the most important thing is to kind of give credit where credit is due and all the nice things that you just heard Major General Worth say about me, uh, those are not so much about me as they are about the people that you see out here today. And this staff and these commanders and these Marines are the ones that have done that. I was here maybe to shepherd them, maybe to, maybe to provide some rudder steer, but in the end it, it was them that did it. And particularly this command team of Sergeant Major Reese, Gunnar Barone, Chad Matzell who's standing out here as the commander of troops, Sergeant Major Lobo, I can't say enough and thank those people. We do have a number of people here from previous units that I've been with. We've got people all the way back to my three, four days. We've got Gary Bass, retired Sergeant Major here, who was my first Sergeant as a company commander in Al Anbar when it was still the Wild West. I appreciate you being here. One of my old platoon commanders, Joe Officer, is here. And then we've got a lot of crew from the old 1-7 days here. Mark Sean is here. Ron Hathaway is here. Barry Fitzpatrick is here. General Simcock is here. I appreciate you all being here. And I guess the last thing I would just say is to my family. You know, you, you may have heard a lot of things about my accomplishments up here, but I just want to be clear that, that my best accomplishment is sitting right here on the front row. And that's you guys, okay? And so the thing that I asked of you when I took this job was for all of us to try and remember and think in our mind what it might be like if one of you were standing out there and what we might expect of someone who was standing here and try to live up to that. And sometimes in the Marine Corps, it's the people that love you who, who suffer the most, right? And so I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I couldn't be more proud of the young man and young lady that you're becoming. And then Tara, of course, my best friend in all of this. Nobody else I would rather do with this with. I love you. Best is yet to come. Charlotte, welcome to the family. Neil, congratulations. You're the right man for the job. Remember what I told you the other day, when you put on that 4J, there's only two colonels in the Marine Corps authorized to wear that, so wear it well. All right, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the commanding officer of 6th Marine Regiment. Uh, thank you all uh, for being here. Um, it, it really is a spectacular opportunity. The view couldn't be better. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the environmentals. It, it's all the people that are out here uh, and, and looking at it out here at the formation, it's great. Uh, back here, it's great. And it really is just a spectacular day. Uh, I'd like to say the first thing uh, first, and that's, uh, you know, thanks to God for all the things that he's done up to this point to put me in this position. Uh, and my eternal prayer is that uh, I can live up to the expectation uh, that he's laid out before me as a, as a husband, as a parent, as a Marine, and as a commander. Um, I know that, uh, General, I'm sorry, I'll go ahead and admit it right now. There are going to be days that I fall short and miss the mark. 
but I'll do my best to uh, to pick it up and carry on. Uh, Draw on and on, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your trust and confidence in, uh, in, in allowing me to lead EOTG. Uh, your example and your faith in me uh, really, really helped me prepare for this job, and, and I couldn't have done it uh, without that opportunity. I really do appreciate it. Uh, General Ward, we spoke in your office uh, about some of the, the dirt that we've chewed together, uh, and I'm happy to continue serving with you uh, in the Carolina MAGTAF. And, uh, same thing, uh, General Odom, my common threads uh, all up and down. Uh, back to some 3A days, you know, pour a little bit out for them, can't make it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm just proud to be back in the Follow Me division, uh, ready to ready to get some done. Uh, Colonel Lobby, thank you uh, for being here as well. Uh, as I as I look out, you know, Greg mentioned it, the uh, the previous commanders that are here in attendance is, is really spectacular. Uh, you know, General Ward, uh, General Simcock, uh, we got Dan Canfield back here. Uh, there were a lot of folks that uh, just couldn't make it, but, uh, you know, from Colonel Catlin, you know, all the way up, uh, and now adding Greg Gordon to that list is uh, is truly remarkable. And, and I'll be honest, I'm kind of sitting here now. I'm kind of like the the, the 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 schmuck who's backstage, looking at Jimi Hendrix at Monterey, being like, "Hey, how am I going to follow that?" Uh, but Greg, thanks for the thanks for everything that you've done for me, uh, preparing me to take over and uh, and, and get to this position. Uh, we talked that you know today is not about uh, it's not about you. It's not about me. We'll play our parts here in the formation, but it is about it, the Marines and sailors of the regiment. And uh, and, and I'm, I'm honored to take uh, take command and be in this position. And uh, I've served in this regiment before, uh, and I've carried that J with me uh, here in Lejeune, in Europe, and on the battlefield. And I've come home with it imbued in my heart, and I'm happy to be back in this regiment. And the Commandant posted orders for this formation and told me and directed me to take command. And in this formation, I ceremoniously took the colors of this regiment. But I want to say in front of you, in front of the Marines who served in this regiment before, in peacetime, in combat, in war, who I owe a debt of gratitude, both before, during, and after combat, the same goes for you. It's not a ceremony. It's not orders on a piece of paper. It's a blood oath to prepare you for the eventuality of combat, morally, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, to the best of my ability. And then when it's time to go over the top, we all go together. Finally, to my family, uh, thank you all for being here. It's, uh, there's folks here I haven't seen in a, in a long time, so thanks for coming up. Uh, Charlotte, Isabella, Josh, I hope that I'm uh, continue to be the husband and father that, uh, that y'all deserve. Thank you all for being here. Um, this really is a spectacular day, and uh, we all wouldn't be here if it weren't for the Marines and sailors who have served in this regiment in the Marine Corps carrying on this legacy. And I'm proud to be a part of it again. Thank you. In lieu of flowers, Colonel and Jared Gordon and Colonel and Charlotte Berry have made a monetary donation to the Silver Five Fund.